So we said that the Volkswagen had the crisis. Okay. So the, what we want to learn in this class is what should we do in a crisis? If our company has a crisis, what's the correct way to do? What's the correct thing to do? So if we don't pay attention to ethics in managing the crisis, we already had the crisis, it happened. So we're talking about crisis management. Okay, managing the crisis. So we should do the right thing in the crisis. If we do the wrong thing, it can cause the collapse or a big problem for the company. Uh, we want to create the correct corporate culture we just talked about before, so we can deal with the crisis. And we're going to analyze the case of the BP oil spill. So what do you know about the BP oil spill? Do you know anything about that? What does spill mean? What, does an, what is an oil spill? Hmm? It's an accident. That, what happens to the oil? And then the oil tank opens up and all the oil goes into the ocean. Okay? So we can have a look on the Google images. So what kind of effect does an oil spill have? So this was the Deep Horizon oil spill, right? There was an explosion on the oil rig. Underneath the ocean, the oil all started escaping. Okay, and we can see it has this kind of problem on the birds and the ocean and the beaches. So what do you think was the negative effect of the oil spill? Ecosystem has been Ecosystem has been the ecosystem is damaged. Fishermen lose their income. Seafood restaurants, tourist areas have a problem. Okay, just a lot of pollution in the ocean. It needs to be cleaned up. Okay. So. Uh, this, just first of all, let's look at two examples of crisis management. Uh, the first one is Union Car Bridge in India. There was a poisonous gas leak from the company. Do you understand gas leak? Gas came out, a poisonous gas. It caused the death of thousands of people. It's quite serious, right? Mistake. Uh, the firm has paid 700, 470 million in uh, compensation and uh, the executives were convicted. Starbucks was charged with uh, charging, asking for money for bottles of water after the emergency in the 9-11. Do you know 9-11? So there was the 9-11 and then some police or firefighters wanted some water. But the Starbucks in New York said, no, give me money first. Right? First give me money, then I'll give you the water. Okay? What do you think about that? Hmm? Then they had the boy online boycott of Starbucks, right? Online internet boy boycott. So we can see the problem if there is that kind of crisis, we can cause a big problem for companies. However, on the other hand, uh, Johnson & Johnson, we talked about before, when we talked about creating long-term value, the case of Johnson & Johnson, they had a product called Ty Tylenol, and somebody died after taking Tylenol. Okay? And before they did any investigation or found out why, they recalled all of the products immediately. Do you understand recall? immediately recalled all of the Tylenol products. And then later they did the research and they found out that just somebody put the rat poison instead of the Tylenol into the packet in the shop. Some crazy person, right? So it was just one isolated criminal act. Okay, somebody just thought, I don't know why, but they took out the Tylenol tablet and put in the rat poison and closed the packet again. Okay? So, but anyway, because of Johnson & Johnson's quick recall, nowadays the Tynolol is a very well trusted brand in the market. And a tuna company, do you eat tuna? 
Bria, you eat a lot of tuna, right? Yes. Do you like tuna? Do you eat dolphin safe tuna? You don't eat dolphin safe tuna? Don't care about the dolphins? Hmm? Do you care about dolphins? Not really? Do you care about dolphins? Well, so some people care about dolphins, right? So uh, they were worried because in the 90s they were using the fishing net with the very... Uh, can catch the dolphins, a lot of dolphins, right? And then they don't, they just, they don't, they just kill the dolphin. So they made some dolphin safe way of catching the tuna where they don't catch the dolphin. Okay, maybe the net is lighter or not as strong. So it doesn't catch the dolphin. So they were accused, they had the problem of catching too many dolphins and then they made the dolphin safe label and they got a competitive advantage from that. So the point is, if we make a bad reaction to the crisis, then we can't get the bad image and bad publicity for the company. If we make a good reaction to the crisis, then we can get, we can actually turn the negative point into an opportunity. Okay? So, <clears throat> what is an ethical crisis? So, an ethical crisis is a decisive moment caused by a severe ethical lapse. Requiring the firm and its leadership to decide whether to react based on a set of ethical values or principles or based on the financial objectives. So we discussed about the case before of the Ford Pinto. Okay? In Ford Pinto, they had a problem with the safety of the gas tank. Okay? Ethical lapse. So the, the leadership need to decide. Are we going to do what we should do according to ethics, or are we going to do what's better for the company financially? Okay, so that's an ethical crisis. We need to make a decision. So the most common is product defect. Something wrong with our product in our company. We know there's something wrong. Customers don't know there's something wrong yet, right? So maybe they'll never find out. Okay, or else we can just pay compensation to some customers who has the problem. Okay. Environmental disaster. We saw the oil leak or other problem. Uh, illegal conduct. So we had bribery. We talked about Siemens in China involved in bribery. Okay. And breaches of human rights. So Nike had a problem in the late 90s, 2000s, where the child labor, right? They were using suppliers who was using the child labor, which is against the human rights of the children. There was a boycott of Nike. So we're talking about those kind of examples. <clears throat> so we have to understand that there is an opportunity. In every crisis, there is an opportunity. Okay? So we can strengthen and communicate our commitment to responsible manager. We can emerge stronger and more productive. So we, call, we saw the case of uh, Johnson & Johnson. Okay? They do the right thing very quickly and well, then they can actually improve their reputation after the crisis. So let's look at the BP case. So there was an explosion on the deep sea oil drill. It killed 11 workers. Five million barrels of oil were released into the uh, ocean. There was some serious damage to the wildlife, uh, the fishing and tourism, and of course the share value in uh, BP was gone down for the owners. So we can see all of these negative things. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this case using the kind of virtues or core ethical values, so ethical values or virtues, that the company should have when they are dealing with the crisis. Okay? What virtues did the ethics guy talk about the last time? Can you remember? On the video? Hmm? Fairness? Honesty? 
love, consideration or love. Anything else? There, maybe there is no word in English for nunchi, <laughs> but maybe consideration. Why? Anything else? He said, do you know, like, do you know Google's vision? Do no harm? Do no evil? Right? Google's corporate... We talked about an ethical vision statement, right? For Google, ethical vision statement, do no harm, do no evil. Okay, there was one more, can anybody remember? We wrote down all five. So that, those are the ideas of the ethics guy, right? So now we're looking at the idea, again, different... Respect. Hmm? Respect. <laughs> Do you like those ethical values? Different people have different ethical values. But here we have some ethical values which are suggested for companies to use in the crisis. Okay? So the first one is trustworthiness. Do you understand trustworthiness? So we sh you should be able to trust us, okay? So underneath trustworthiness is grouped here. Honesty is here. So it's similar to this one, trustworthy. Are you trustworthy? Can I trust you? Yeah. Hmm? So it's similar to honesty, right? Honesty, other words we can see here, keeping our promise, integrity, transparency, opening, and loyalty, okay? So, BP had a problem with, with uh, trustworthiness, okay? They had management failures in communication, procedures, training and supervision of employees, supervising contractors, and appreciating risk. So we talked about this problem before. Uh, we have the information here, but how can we get the information from here to here to here to here, you can have a communication problem. Also in the Wall Street crisis, okay? The information from the front line was getting up to the higher executives, okay? So, if we, maybe these people are not being honest, okay? They're not telling them, oh, this is the si really is the situation. They're being a little bit dishonest. So this can cause the problem, okay? Do you want to tell your boss that exactly the real situation, or maybe tell them a little bit watered down, right? So some people don't tell exactly the real situation. So, uh, for example, the employees needed more specific training, but they didn't get the training they needed, okay? Uh, the risk, we have to look at the risk of the drill breaking, right? But again, people didn't communicate properly about the risk of the drill. And they said, ah, oh, it's okay, it'll be fine, don't worry, right? Maybe the engineer says, oh, no problem with the drill, okay? Then that's a trustworthiness failure. So all of these things undermine trust in BP. So the culture was not very trustworthy in that case. So what did BP do now to set up, to deal with this problem? They set up a new open talk. It's a confidential helpline for people to speak up when the code of conduct is being violated. Okay? So we mentioned that before as a way to deal with this problem. Confidential helpline. Okay? Do you understand confidential? We don't know anonymous. We don't know your name. Okay? So you call me and you say, hey, I just wanted to let you know I'm working on the oil drill and if uh, we continue like this, I think we could have a problem. It's not safe. Okay? But before, the culture in BP, the workers said that they felt unsafe. They felt there was some problem. But if they complained, then they would be changed, moved to another area. Okay? Or they wouldn't get the next contract. Do you understand? Just they're doing the contract for six months. Six months. So if they say, oh, I, I think there's a problem, it's not safe, then they think, oh, this person is causing problems, and we are going to not give them the contract next time. So we talked about that problem before. So that's why they felt 
in BP like they didn't want to say anything. Can you understand that kind of culture? Culture where the people is not honest and transparent. Can you understand how there could be that kind of culture? Do you think you might do that too? If you thought that, oh no, I could lose my job if I complain about the safety. Do you think you might do that too? Just not complain? Follow the culture? Or would you complain? What would you do? Complain that it's not safe to the boss? Hmm? Or just last week, somebody else complained it wasn't safe, and now they're not here anymore. They're gone. What are you going to do? Are you going to complain too? No. Huh? So you can see the problem can be the culture, right? The workers can be pressurized by the culture in the organization. So we should try to make a culture. Uh, this kind of helpline can help people to do anonymously complain about the safety. Okay, the next one that we should use is uh, responsibility. Do you understand responsibility? Okay, responsibility, maybe fairness and respect, consideration, all of these things tied in. Do you try to blame other people when you make a mistake? Hmm? Usually I try to blame other people. I have to change that habit, right? If I did something wrong, then I, I right, like think it was because somebody else did something, not because of me, not because I did something wrong, right? People have that thing that they like to blame other people first, and then themselves later. But if we are a company, we have to, don't try and shift blame. Do you understand to shift blame? Shift blame? Try to blame the other person. Shift means moving the blame. So for example, let's say I scratch my car, okay, against something I couldn't see, right? And then I say to my wife, why didn't you tell me it was there, right? I try to blame my wife. You're sitting on that side of the car. Why don't you see the thing is there and tell me, okay? That's shifting blame, blaming somebody else, okay? But we should just accept the blame ourselves. So, uh, we should apologize, companies should always apologize, and compensate the people who have been harmed by our mistake. Okay, so if I scratch another car, and it was my fault, I should say sorry, and pay for the problem. Okay? BP, first they tried to blame the owner of the rig, and then they tried to blame the cement contractor. So BP was leasing the rig. The rig is the thing where they get the oil, like the metal structure in the sea is called the rig, oil rig. Okay? So actually BP didn't own, own the rig, they were just leasing it, the rig. Do you understand leasing? How do you say lease in Korea? Lease. Lease, right? So they tried to blame the owner of the rig. They said, oh, the rig is the problem, not, not us. And then they tried to blame the person who was providing the cement. Do you understand cement? Yeah. The wall is made of cement, right? They, they said, oh, the cement was poor quality. It's all Halliburton's fault for poor quality cement. That's why we have the problem, okay? They also tried to make the residents give up their right to sue. They went around to all the houses of the people who lived on the coast, and they told them, I'll give you $5,000, Obegman one, okay? If you sign this letter saying that you're not going to sue BP, okay? So they, they didn't try to compensate properly. They just tried to give them some small money and make sign a letter uh, that they're not going to sue the company. Okay, so that wasn't acting responsibly. Okay, BP should have recognized that they didn't have the proper training and supervision. They didn't supervise, these are contractors, they didn't supervise their contractor. So even if I'm buying cement, I need to super check its properly <coughs> quality. Okay, and they didn't check the risk. So instead of apologizing and admitting those things, they just tried to blame the other people. So they shouldn't do that in the crisis, okay? Uh, then the next one is caring. Caring like consideration or love. So the company should act in a caring way. So before the crisis, they failed to install a safety device. Before the accident, a survey showed that 46% of the workers 
feared reprisals if they raised safety concerns. Okay? So it means that if I get a reprisal, it means I get some bad effect. So they did a survey, and 46% of the workers were afraid to complain because they could get some bad effect if they complained. Okay? So it shows that the company wasn't caring. And also they had a choice. They made a hole in the ocean. Okay? They could have spent more money to make a second, like a plan B safety device. If the hole opens up, we can have another way to stop it. Okay? But they tried to save money by not getting the second safety device. Do you know what happened? There was a hole in the ocean and the oil was coming out. Very high pressure. And they couldn't stop the hole. Right? It took them two months to close the hole. But if they had the second safety device, they could have closed the hole immediately. But they just tried to save money. So it shows that the company wasn't considerate, consider, showing consideration for their workers or for society. And then during the crisis, the CEO went out on his yacht. Okay? Does that show that the company is caring? No. So we have a hole in the ocean, all the oil is getting out, and the sea goes, goes out on his yacht for a holiday. What do you think? Is that show caring or not caring? Not caring. Not caring, right? So it's the same for the politicians. You see them, if there's some crisis in their country, they're away somewhere else, they always come home, right? They don't go, ah, it's okay, and just keep playing golf or something, right? So this guy got into trouble and got the bad uh, publicity for the company by doing that kind of thing. So this is the last two things we see that we shouldn't do, right? We shouldn't do this kind of irresponsible and uncaring attitude. It can be bad for the company, too. So then, uh, do you have any question about just what we started to study today? Okay, then let's finish there for today. If you have any question about your midterm assignment, you can come to my office at the end of class, it's just here, and ask me. Okay?